I can draw a correlation. This is, and, and Mark will know about this. This is like Target retreating out of Canada. Yep. Right? So Target, first of all, you know, in Canada, we call Target Target. You know, and I don't know why. I mean, this, this, <laughs> we do this as Canadians. One notch above. That's water. like that's like calling a coffee with two creams and two sugars a double double. I still I still don't get it. But in any in any case, we we tend to, we tend to, we love our brands and we tend to give them these odd silly names. But in any case, Target retreated for two reasons. One is they fail to understand the Canadian psyche and the cultural mix in our own country. A consumer in Vancouver is very different from a consumer in Montreal, different from a consumer in Halifax, different needs, different cultural backgrounds. Yep. And just across those three cities, those three areas, there's likely six languages spoken right there, right? And Canada, you know, seems very large on a map, but the reality is it is not even 10% of the U.S. population. So that's number one. Did not understand the consumer. The second thing they did they screwed up their supply chain. And the third one, and I don't think our audience knows this, and there was a, an article that dabbled in kind of trying to explain this issue. And I view I view Target as an infinite player in this space here, but this they, they failed. 50% of the employees at Target's Canadian head office in the outskirts of Toronto were transplanted from Minneapolis. That was the biggest mistake they made thinking that they could take 200 people traveling back and forth mm. into the Canadian space that suddenly, oh, magically, this is an operational problem here. Let's get a bunch of Six Sigma people. We'll fix it. And that's not going to work. And I, I agree with your statement, Britton, is that we've seen this. This has happened before. I've seen it in our own backyard. And I think that the reality is it's sexy to go into India. There's a lot of people. There's a big opportunity, but you can bleed yourself dry of money and knowledge and great executives if you don't know what you're up against. And I love how how Amazon has positioned themselves to force Walmart to force their hand to spend a lot of money. And that is a for that amount of money to have been approved. I think you must agree that somebody must have jumped through some hoops at head office. I agree. And, and I think the thing that you said that we need to follow through on is let us not give the impression that if you play the infinite game, that you aren't involved in strategy. Strategy allows the infinite game to continue making wise decisions, not deviating from who you are, not overreaching. And so when I look at what's going on with Walmart in India, we would be remiss if we didn't point out that this is a great strategy on the part of Amazon. And one way to think about it is if Amazon was a crocodile, they're laying underneath the surface of the water at the watering hole and along comes the buffalo. And Amazon, the crocodile, grabs that buffalo. They don't bite it and let go. They want to pull that buffalo into deep water. To me, India is deep water for Walmart. This is out of their wheelhouse completely. Amazon's global. Amazon has a very experienced team of executives. And unlike Target, when they made the mistake of how they went to Canada, Amazon built up a very experienced team of individuals who are familiar with business in India, the culture in India. And Amazon has gone out of their way to really ingratiate themselves to the consumers, to the population. Flipkart, even though they've been in business for 2007, they were unable to establish a real leadership position within India because if they had, Amazon wouldn't have been able to come in and quickly take market share. Why was Amazon able to do that? They're able to provide a better customer experience. So just because Walmart is entering India, doesn't mean that they're going to find success. And again, that's what's going to be interesting as this plays out. Does the infinite player Amazon, are they willing to take losses? Do they just simply invest massively in price and sell items at a loss no matter what? Walmart does the same thing, so they have to make investments. But what happens is there's two different outcomes. Wall Street punishes Walmart for losses and they reward Amazon 
for sticking to their strategy. So the executive team at Amazon, I think, is going to be the one that stays the course, doesn't deviate. But I think within Walmart is where we're going to see a lot of the infighting beginning and a lot of the second guessing just as happened with your example of Target when they entered Canada. There was an awful lot of people who stood back from that and said, why didn't we realize what we were getting into in the first place? Yeah, and I can remember when they opened the first store. In Canada, they came in through an acquisition, right? They bought the assets out of Zellers, uh, Zellers Canada. The one thing I found that was very odd, now they invested an incredible amount of money in re rebranding, re-energizing the real estate and so on, but they kept the same employees. So, and these were unionized employees. Mark, is, is that correct? I think it was, correct, right? Correct, correct. So I, I can remember going into one of the stores. Now, aside from having holes in the inventory, so stuff missing, the product mix wasn't like the US. So we were no longer calling it Target as proud Canadians, we would call it Target. And the employees were disgruntled. And it was just a brutal experience, not the same that you would get south of the border. Now, I'm curious, who do you think is doing, besides the Amazon and the Amazons and the, and the larger retailers, who's playing the infinite game really well in grocery retail? Aldi and Lidl. I tell you what, if you want to look at a company and say, or both companies, you could look at them both and say, you couldn't ask for a better team of executives. You couldn't ask for a better team that understands why are they there? What is their mission in life on a daily basis? And between Aldi and Lidl, they have over 20,000 stores globally. They will be the largest grocery retailer globally for many years to come. And in the United States, what I really anticipate happening is that Aldi and Lidl are going to expand beyond their niche market, and they're going to start introducing some more high-end products. I believe they are going to go to more of a digital platform, but they'll take command and control over it themselves. And... When I look at Aldi and Lidl, and as you were speaking earlier about the financial crisis and the fact that there were retailers who had people coming in and they really couldn't afford anything because they didn't have the right products, Aldi and Lidl never have that problem. They are focused on private label. They don't deviate from that. They really maintain low prices. They maintain high quality. They don't deviate from that. And although many strategy advisors have said to Aldi and Lidl, you should be going into electronics and expanding in other areas, they understand they need to really stick to what it is that's made them successful all these years. And so when I look out there, other than Amazon, certainly Aldi and Lidl, I certainly agree with you about Target as well. I think Target is a much better company today for what happened to them in Canada, because I think it was a wake up call. And as we know, a new CEO came in after that. And I believe Brian Cornell today says, we have to be smarter. We have to have a better strategy. And more importantly, everything we do, we have to understand it needs to be focused on our core customer, our target customer, and not necessarily trying to compete with what an Amazon is doing or a Walmart is doing. Let us make sure we don't deviate from who we are as a company. And when they went to Canada, I was just amazed at what I saw. So I certainly agree with you that Target does a really good job. But other than that, well, let's add Wegmans. I think Wegmans absolutely is an infinite player. They've not deviated. They haven't expanded. I think HEB in Texas, they're absolutely phenomenal at what they do. So I could make the argument that they're a pretty good uh, in infinite player. But when we talk about an infinite player, what we're looking at is who is going to be able to do this globally and who's going to be able to do this as demographic changes occur and so forth. So these companies today, the Wegmans and the HEBs, yes, they're successful. What about 10 years from now, 20 years from now? That's what we mean by the infinite player. The company goes on forever because they're able to adjust to the needs of the consumer without changing who they are. So that's what's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. 